Hello. I'm going to begin this film with an apology. The soundtrack is some frost. We had a very hard frost and it's now melting so you can probably hear the roof dripping. In this film I'm going to show you some very fine detailed cutting. So what I'm doing is I have my print here, roof shingle rookery, and I'm going to turn it into a special Valentine's Day print by getting rid of the birds and dropping in some hearts. Here I have my lino and I've just gone in with a white china graph and marked out where I want my little hearts to be and I want to see them really really clearly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Indian ink and a dip pen to draw on the lino. Indian ink is really good for drawing on the lino and staying there permanently if you are using oil-based ink like me and cleaning with white spirit. It's perfect, it's, it's very durable, it won't transfer to the printing paper, fantastic. Please don't use it if you are using water-based ink or if you are using safe wash print it, printing ink and you're cleaning with water. Water and Indian ink um, will mix and the Indian ink will come off and make a terrific mess. So this is a process best left entirely to oil-based inks. So I'm going to just get in there and draw my little parts. And the reason I like the um, Indian ink, the black Indian ink, is because this is tiny details that I'm working on here. So having a big contrast in colour with the black makes it so much easier to see. And I know from experience that there's not going to be any transfer to my print. Hi, I just wanted to let you know we are changing the frequency of our publishing and we're going to go down to one film a week. It's simply that I've got a lot on at the moment and I'm writing a book for Crowwood Press about the lino cut that I'm really excited about. And we're very keen to keep providing content about printmaking and especially keen to honour those donations from the crowdfunders. So thank you very much for those of you who've been doing that. And it really is helping with the filmmaking. And I've also got my own prints to do. So I've got these lovely big prints of Yorkshire, which are crying out to be cut. And we are going to be filming a little bit of that so that you can follow along beside me. So we'll still be here every week. It'll just be once a week. Now there's no need to use Indian ink, you could use other things to draw on the lino with. I just wanted to show you this and demonstrate how big a contrast black ink makes so that you can see what you're doing with a fine, cutting fine detail. The other thing about the black ink is of course it's a contrast to the carbon so that I don't mistake the um, birds for hearts and cut those out as well by mistake. So when it comes to cutting this out, wait for the Indian ink to dry thoroughly, of course, and I am going to use a variety of cutting tools. I have some traditional ones here. These are the ones um, that I inherited and they date from the 1930s, these ones. These ones are power grip, uh, which are a really good sort of mid-priced tool and I like them a lot. And then this is a professional Japanese woodblock tool and a Japanese uh, flat chisel for clearing out. So I'm going to use a whole range of different tools to do my cutting. I'm also going to use um, a magnifying visor. There are lots of these on the market. This one is, is OptiVisor. It's, a, it's the American... Uh, company and um, I find this very good but there are a whole range at all sorts of price points. The other thing I am going to use is a slope. 
I've found over the years that I am much more comfortable if I use a slope when I'm cutting. So here's one we made, um, or rather I should say Ben made, and it was really for photography, but I use it for all sorts of things, and you can see it's pretty messy. Um, I'm going to cover it with a non-slip mat. So this is, again, a, uh, I have put the edging around, but it's just non-slip rug underlay. I think we got this one at Ikea, but again, they, you can buy this all over the place and it just stops things sliding about. So everything's secure. The other thing I have is a bright light and for that I'm using a builder's light. It's actually a light designed to light up building sites and um, I'm going to put a raking light across the cutting so I can see what I'm doing. I started my cutting by isolating each part and to do that I'm using a U-tool and U-tools are very good for this because they will cut a nice even trench. Now I've got all my um, hearts isolated, I can see where they are really clearly and I know that I can get rid of the rest of the lino and not worry about hitting those hearts. So I'm going to go over to a bigger tool now and just start to clean out the lino that I don't want. So now I've run those cuts through, I'm going to go over to a wider tool and use that to clear out these areas. This is a Japanese tool, um, for it's actually for designed for woodcut but it works very well for lino. You could use a flat chisel if you've got one for this, this part. Cutting the ridges, uh, cutting these, these trenches through the lino with a U-shape 
just makes it much easier to use those wide flat tools. If you try and use just the flat tool itself or a chisel to cut away the lino, it, it's very hard. I wouldn't recommend it for cutting into the surface. If you try and cut into the surface with a flat tool, it's kind of clumsy. But if you run these trenches through it first, it's much easier. I should say my lino today is pretty cold. It's quite stiff, stiffer than it would normally be um, because of the weather. Now that I've got all of the surface of the lino cut away, I'm going to go in and I'm going to refine these areas because with a print like this where you have tiny little blocks of lino effectively on a background, you want that background to be low and flat so that you don't get chatter pick up in when I, when I print, I don't want any ridges. That's my particular choice. Some people really like those little random ridges in their work, but I want this to print completely clean. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to make sure. And this is where a flat tool really comes in useful because it's going to take out all those ridges and I can get right down flat. I'll still need to wipe the lino probably when I come to print, but this is going to cure a lot of problems, just taking the time to go over and refine. And here, I've got a little bit of the backing, the jute backing here coming away. Always be on the watch for those because those little tufty bits of jute will pick up the ink and print. So before I print I will also go around the edge and just make sure there aren't any stray hairs. have noticed how I'm using both hands here. Um, this hand is stabilising, my non-dominant hand is stabilising everything and guiding the tool to a certain extent and getting into the habit of doing that means that your hand is always behind the blade which is a very good idea. So this could be a flat woodworking chisel. I mean, it's nice to have 
the right tool designed for cutting uh, woodblock or lino cut. But you can improvise. For now. I'm going to go in on the detail here now and I'm still using a U-shaped tool and I'm going to start going in and using the side of the tool almost to just work my way up to the edge of those hearts. Instinct tells you that you need a fine V tool to do this but actually a U tool will give a better result because you can use the side of the tool and just take your time to work your way up to the block without crumbling it. And that's especially important when you're isolating small shapes like this with a lot of lino cut away around them because you do have to cut the lino away quite deep. If you were cutting around small shapes and there wasn't a big area of cutaway lino around them, so let's say you were cutting lines into a block, you wouldn't need to go anything like as deep. But here I do, so I really want to be careful that I don't crumble away the lino while I'm working. So using the side of the tool and just coming up to the edge really keeps things clean and tidy. And you'll see that I'm not fiddling my way around each individual heart as I go. I'm more treating it as um, a sort of multiple process where I'm doing all the cuts in one direction at once and then going back on myself. And I find that's a sort of easier way to work. It's a quicker way and it helps you to get into a rhythm of cutting as well. Some of these little hearts I might actually sort of edit as I go and just cut them to get rid of any imperfections in the drawing and just improve their shape. And that's easy to see with the combination of the black ink and the stained lino. I can really see what I'm doing quite closely here. And I quite like that there's a variation in the heart. Some are nice and sort of fat and round and some are much sort of skinnier. So now I've, I've started refining these, I'm going to refine yet again and go back and take out some of the spare material up at the top and I've done it this way around where I cleaned out this large area and then started focusing on those because I find it easier without the distraction of the rest of the lino and of course with all that pink gone it's really obvious which bits you're working on so um, that's the way around I'm working for a, this particular uh, project. I might not work that way always, but I just find it visually easier to get rid of all the big expansive pink so I can hone in on the details here. And I'm going to go to a bigger U just to get rid of some of this excess lino. So I'm still using U tools, I haven't used a V tool yet for this. Go 
because I find that with a U tool doing this sort of work, you're far less likely to get lots of crumbly lino. That's a bit I've missed. When you're doing little tiny, just taking off little tiny details like that, just be careful that you don't crack the surface of the lino. Just take your time and allow the, the tool to slide at the beginning of the cut rather than ramming it into the lino because you can actually sort of crack apart the surface if you're not careful. It is important to have sharp tools and we have some lovely films on tool sharpening. I'll put the series numbers into the description but it's in the reduction uh, lino with laura series of play on the playlists okay now it's time for my v-tool and i have a v-tool here it's quite a wide v um, but i'm i like it because i can use it almost like a stamp to take out that top of the heart shape. And you see how I'm holding the tool up and going down, nipping out that central V. Again, I don't want the lino to crumble and this is doing a clean, swift cut that's keeping everything tidy. I'll go back and refine that cut in a moment. The refining part where you tidy everything up is really important and it's actually the difference between a really good um, printed image and a slightly scruffy one. So being patient and just taking the time to really refine detail cuts like this is really important. It's the difference between it looking really polished and excellent for the print and looking scruffy so you know put something good on to listen to and settle down and get comfortable and just take the time needed to get everything as it should be so now I have my hearts here but it's also quite ridgy so I'm going to do a little bit of tidying up with a bigger U gouge
say. Now I've finished cutting, I'm going to give this a good brushing and make sure I get rid of all these little bits and bobs. I'm also going to check that I don't have any hairy bits of the jute um, from around the edge, get rid of those, and then the block will be ready to print. I hope you found that useful and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see all the films in the series and you want to make sure that you don't miss any. And if you've liked the video, please press the like button. Thanks a lot and I'll see you again.